Greetings and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your health and vitality and well-being, and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body, you are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That is why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 31 years of practicing pharmacy, I've seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment -moment basis, and while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health, nutrition, prescription drugs, if you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, if you have a success story you'd like to share, if you want to contribute to the conversation, if you have questions about the longevity products, the longevity business, formulations, ingredients, we want to hear from you on the bright side. We welcome your calls at 844-236-6010. If you have a particularly difficult health challenge that you or a loved one or somebody you care about is, is dealing with, we can help you, 844-236-6010. If you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we can help you, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised or recommended on the bright side, please go to brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. Purchase products right off the website. You can also sign up to join the Bright Side Ben team right off the website for a one-time $25 fee. You can be in business for yourself. You can earn thank you checks associated with helping spread the word and changing the world with the power of nutrition, with the power of a good nutritional supplement program. Or if you just want to get your products at the wholesale price for a one-time $25 fee, sign up at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. Also like you to check out our truth treatment products at truthtreatments.com, truth transdermal C serum, truth transdermal C balm, truth omega-6 healing cream, and our Truth Retinol 5% Gel, made with vitamin C and retinol and our transdermal delivery matrix. And that's it, folks. No silicon, no oil, no water, no filler, no waxes, no emulsifiers. You shouldn't have to pay for ingredients that you're not using. All our ingredients and all our truth treatments are active and functional. They're there for you and your skin. Every molecule. That's why you only use it. Those of you guys have used our truth treatments. No, you only use a drop or two or three of our truth serum. A tiny pinhead size amount of our truth transdermal sea balm. A little tiny film on your finger of our Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream and Truth Retinol 5% Gel is all you need. Products last for several months. Truth Retinol 5% Gel will last you over a year. All the products are up at truthtreatments.com. Got toners and exfoliators and cleansers coming out later this year as well at truthtreatments.com. Truthtreatments.com. Okay, thanks for listening to The Bright Side. We are talking cortisol. We're talking stress. We're talking about the idea of pushing the body past its comfort zone. Pushing the psyche past its comfort zone. Just pushing past the comfort zone. A friend told me a long time ago something I never forgot. He said, if you're not on the edge, you're taking up too much space. We always want to be on the edge of things. We want to be on the edge of our life. We want to be pushing it. That's how we grow. That's how we evolve. We evolve. Human beings evolved to look over, to, to try to see what was over the other hill, to explore, to push forward. That's what... That's what exercise is about. Exercise helps us grow. Stress helps us grow. Without stress, we don't grow. Stress is our friend. And I don't want to keep repeating myself here, but we've been talking about cortisol. Cortisol is not a bad guy. Cortisol is a good guy, a very good guy. Cortisol helps us deal with stress. It's a stress management hormone. There's so many wonderful things that cortisol does. It wakes us up in the morning. It gives us energy. It helps us uh, process 
uh, the, the inevitable stresses and strains that come with being alive. And maybe the most important role of cortisol in the body is it's a natural anti-inflammatory. It's our natural Motrin. It suppresses inflammation. It suppresses the immune system. Now, in the short run, that's a, a good thing. You don't want to have your immune system going crazy for every little bump and every little bruise and every little scratch. But in the long run, this idea of suppressing inflammation is not so good. In the short run, the symptomatic relief that cortisol gives us is an absolute godsend. And this is why the medical model loves cortisol or steroid-like drugs, so-called steroid drugs, prednisone, dexamethasone, fluocinil, fluocininide. Skin, the skin business, the dermatology business is loaded with these, these uh, steroid drugs because they suppress the immune system. They suppress the inflammatory system. Even non-steroid anti-inflammatories like aspirin and Motrin are, are part of the mainstay of pharmacology, of the pharmacomedical model. Between aspirin and Motrin, you have the best-selling drugs on the planet. And Tylenol, although that works a little differently. The link between this inflammatory system, the inflammation, and the immune system is manifested in the body by something called cytokines. That's a fancy chemical term. You probably heard of the term interleukin. If you have cancer, they use interleukin kinds of substances, interleukin drugs. Cytokines and interleukins are uh, blocking cytokines, I should say, and interleukins are a really major part of, of pharmacology of drugs. White blood cells, those are your immune cells, they will secrete these cytokines and interleukins as part of the defensive response. Cytokine means, to ter means uh, uh, to cell movement. Cyto for cell, kine for movement. Cell movement. Cytokines make things happen. They create inflammatory chemistry. And then, once those cytokines go up, cortisol kicks in, and then you have anti-inflammation. It's this kind of balance between the cytokines and the cortisol. So uh, the pharmacomedical model will either duplicate the cortisol or block the cytokines. That's the way they control inflammation. The cytokines stimulate inflammation, the cortisol s suppresses the inflammation. So you, the pharmacological model never thinks, well, what's causing the inflammation? The pharmacological model says, how can we shut it down? We'll either shut it down by shutting down, by shutting down the cytokines, blocking the cytokines, or by stimulating or by mimicking cortisol. Remember, inflammation is not a bad thing. Inflammation is protective, it's defensive, it's part of healing. Inflammation turns on growth. There is no growth unless there's some inflammation. Of course, inflammation does need to be regulated. It needs to be controlled, and that's how it works in the body. you got inflammation and anti-inflammation. Everything's at a perfect balance. Once a certain threshold of inflammation is reached, boom, cortisol comes in and, and quiets the inflammation down. So it's this balance between cytokines causing inflammation and cortisol causing anti-inflammation that we really want to be working with. Cytokines are kind of like hormones. Cytokines travel in, or secreted out of cells once when they've been damaged. So you get a scratch, say, your skin cell gets damaged, the cytokine gets released, and the cytokine kind of tickles nerve cells, or it'll tickle adrenal cells, or it'll tickle inflammatory cells and turn them on into some kind of activity. If it tickles a nerve cell, you're going to feel pain. If it tickles an adrenal cell, you may get some cortisol released. If it tickles an inflammatory cell, you're going to get uh, some kind of inflammation. And then, and then cortisol will eventually come and balance that out. Everything about the cell, everything in health and chemistry and biochemistry and biology is about the cell. And the cytokines are the major initiators of cell activity. There's three main initiators. You got your hormones, you got your cytokines, and you got another one, another class of substances called icosanoids. We've talked about that in the past. I don't want to digress too much. The, the, the icosanoids, they, those come from your fats. That's why you want, always want to make sure you're getting your essential fatty acids. The essential fatty acids are your molecules of inflammation and anti-inflammation because they turn on these, these substances called uh, icosanoids. The other class is the cytokines. These are water-soluble. You get those from protein, from eating enough protein, making sure you have protein. Cytokine means cell mover. It says, hey, let's get going. we got a problem here. It initiates all the chemistry of pain and inflammation, turns on stuff, uh, cortisol from the adrenal glands. And uh, drug companies have recently fallen in love with, with uh, high-tech high -tech substances that you hear advertised on, on uh, television and radio all the time high-tech anti-inflammatory substances that are super duper expensive that work by shutting down or actually killing destroying cytokines i'll tell you what those are when we come back from our break as we continue talking about cortisol inflammation and the stress response on the bright side
Okay, we are back on the bright side. I'm Farm Span, 844-236-6010 is our number, and we have a empty board. 844-236-6010. If you have questions about the longevity products or your longevity business or health challenges you or a loved one may be dealing with or our truth treatment products, or if you have a success story you'd like to share, 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll get your calls at the bottom of the hour, as we always do on the bright side. We're talking about the uh, cytokines, fancy schmancy chem uh, chemistry. You don't really need to know the fancy schmancy chemistry unless you're taking one of the UMAP drugs, the latest drugs, super high-tech anti-inflammatories because prednisone, every, even doctors know these days that prednisone is, can be very problematic. Most doctors do. So now the drug companies have come up with a fancy way of... Uh, of, of quenching or quelling inflammation. Nobody thinks to say what the heck's causing the inflammation, which is usually food, of course. So you got a whole new high-tech class of pharmacology, the UMAB drugs, Stellara, Tals, Cosentix. Every single night, you're going to see these things advertised. Every single day, you're going to see these things advertised. They probably are the most advertised of all the drugs. To start, they probably came out maybe 10, 12 years ago, and they caused quite the stir in the world of pharmacology. This is the latest high tech, still the same basic stupid idea of shutting down inflammation, but these are high tech versions, uh, uh, high tech, um, um, high tech uh, pharmacological strategies for shutting down inflammation. They actually destroy the cytokine. They call them biologics, makes them sound real good, like they're sort of friendly biologics because we're all biologics we're all biological so if you have a biologic that's not like a real drug is it it's a biologic no it's a real drug it's a toxic drug it's an awful drug it's an expensive drug there's nothing good about them unless you're dealing with inflammation and I guess you could say well they'll suppress the inflammation with less toxicity than uh, than prednisone because these things don't work at the level of the hormone they blow up the cytokine they're still not good. They're still awful. And in my opinion, if you have an inflammatory condition like rheumatoid arthritis or an autoimmune condition, that's basically where these drugs are used, by the way, is an autoimmunity, also in cancer. It doesn't seem like it makes much sense to suppress the inflammation artificially without taking care of the cause of the inflammation. People look at me, not on this program, you know, when I'm doing the radio program or when I do my talks for people who understand these ideas or have heard these ideas. If I'm talking to just average folks, lay people who don't have, have never heard this, these kinds of ideas before, they look at me like I've got three eyes. When I say, you don't, your rheumatoid arthritis is caused by something getting into your system that the body's responding to. It doesn't, nobody's ever thought of that. That if you have an inflammatory condition, the body's responding to something. Disease is response, inflammation's response. The idea when you have inflammation is to listen to the, what's going on, not to shut down the response. That's craziness. And now I understand if you're in miserable pain to temporarily shut down the response while you try to figure out what's going on, maybe that can help you. And that's where some of the milder anti-inflammatories come in, like Motrin and, and um, aspirin and Tylenol. These are much milder. To take a UMAB drug, a Tals or Cosentix, because you have Crohn's disease or celiac disease or rheumatoid arthritis, is just lunacy while you continue to eat the way you were eating and, and, and subjecting the body to whatever you were subjecting it to. When we exercise, we also get cytokine bursts. In fact, when we exercise, we get a special kind of cytokine, uh, a burst of a special kind of cytokine called interleukin-10. Interleukins are cytokines, basically, and they always have numbers after them. So interleukin-10 stimulates growth. Interleukin-10 is a cytokine that's involved with the growth process. But if you have low levels of stimulation, really, really tiny levels, you don't get past a threshold, you don't produce your interleukin-10, rather, you produce uh, cortisol, low levels of cortisol. And so instead of interleukin-10 causing growth, you get actually an another cytokine that's stimulated that doesn't induce growth, that simply induces inflammation without growth. That's why when you're exercising, you've got to exercise to exhaustion. It doesn't do you any good to have a low level of exercise where you don't get past that threshold point because you don't stimulate the growth cytokine. 
And that's the problem with the drip, drip, drip kind of stress that most of us live with. The drip, drip, drip drip stress doesn't stimulate the growth cytokine it just stimulates the inflammation cytokine so you got to have that's why that's why you got to they say when you have an addictive be uh, uh, some kind of addiction you got to hit bottom hitting bottom is the equivalent of reaching that threshold point if you don't hit bottom if it's just drip 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 addiction 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 you don't get it doesn't get really really bad it can go on forever until you die but if you reach hit bottom you reach that threshold, it's like a psychological version of working your muscles to exhaustion. You always want to work to exhaustion when you're working out physically. That's where you get the good stuff. And it doesn't take much either. You can get, you can work your biceps to exhaustion to the point where you'll grow your biceps in a minute, in two minutes. Try just doing a set of curls, one, or or not even a set, just do two reps of curls or, or one rep of curls super slowly. Super duper 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 slowly in one minute. Take one minute to do a set of curls. You'll get a way, be- a way better workout than if you do 10 repetitions and you do them really fast. That's how most people do their, cur- their exercises really fast. If you do your exercise really fast, your body doesn't have as much of a chance to develop these building cytokines. So you want to do your exercise super, super slow. Even just standing out of a sitting position can be a great exercise if you do it super slow. Try it. Try to stand up from a sitting position and take 60 seconds to do it. You can't even do it because it's too, it's, it's too much work. But if you tr- do it for 30 seconds or 20 seconds to the point where you're really, your legs start shaking, your glutes start shaking, you're going to start to secrete this, this interleukin-10, this building cytokine, and that's where you're going to get growth. So we can see once again from a biochemical perspective. It's not the stress that is the problem, but the response to the stress. In quick bursts, followed by lots of long, luscious rest, the body will respond positively. We will grow under these conditions of quick bursts of intense stress, followed by rest. This is what Nietzsche meant when he said, what doesn't kill you will make you stronger. Stress is a type of pressure. Pressure when it's too intense, obviously, is can, can, can break things. You don't want it too intense. But on the other hand, if it's not intense enough, you're not going to get the benefits. So there's a sweet spot of intensity. But when applied correctly, pressure turns coal into diamonds. Love that metaphor. A pressure, turn, a pressure will turn a coal into a diamond. A diamond is nothing more than a lump of coal that's had pressure applied to it. And a human diamond is the same way. A physical diamond or exercise... When we exercise, we, our muscles become more diamond-like when we exercise. And when we uh, are under a, lo- a large amount of pressure psychologically, we can become a psychological diamond. Or we can break. Either way. Correctly applied pressure, by the way, that has a bi- biological growth effect is technically called hormesis. H-O-R-M-E-S-I-S. Where exercise is a type of hormesis. Hormesis is technically what happens when we get exposed to small amounts of radiation or poison. But you can apply this... Metaf- you can you can use a metaphor or, or a metaphor that we all recognize for hormesis is exercise. A little bit of stress, of intense stress, a short amount of intense stress followed by long luscious rest is where we grow and where we develop. And this is especially true, by the way, about the skin. One of the best ways to help build collagen and elastin and all the connective tissue fibers that fight wrinkles is by using this hormesis concept in skincare products. the bright side. I'm pharmacist Ben. 844-236-6010 is our number. Got lots of lines open for you at 844-236-6010. If you have questions about health, nutrition, prescription drugs, the longevity products, the truth, truth treatment products, if you have a success story you'd like to share, or if you just want to contribute to the conversation, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. You can purchase all truth treatments at truthtreatments.com. We also have a skin health blog at truthtreatments.com. Our retinol 5% gel, Truth Transdermal C Serum, Truth Transdermal C Balm, and Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream. If you're dealing with uh, some kind of post-surgical trauma or eczema or uh, perhaps a burn or, or a cut, Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream dramatically speeds up the healing process, almost like first aid, as much as it is a skin softening vitamin C delivery product. All my products are delivery systems for vitamin C and vitamin A. Vitamin C and vitamin A being the two must-haves. 
the two most important topical skin health ingredients. There's a third very helpful topical skin uh, skincare ingredient that you want to look for when you're looking for anti-aging the skin, also softening the skin and moisturizing the skin. I first learned about this ingredient when I was in pharmacy school, and then when I had my compounding pharmacy, I really, really went crazy with this amazing ingredient, and we will be talking about that tomorrow. It's important for uh, what's called hormesis, the idea that stimulating to the point of toxicity, or at least very, 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 very mild, mild toxicity can actually be beneficial. Exercise is a hormesis kind of a phenomena, or the benefits from exercise are hormesis-related. Radiation can be hormesis-related. Uh, small amounts of radiation can actually be stimulatory and, and actually be beneficial. Solar radiation is an example of radiation that can be beneficial. Um, homeopathy works via hormesis, very small amounts of homeopathy. Homeop homeopathic remedies are toxins and very, very tiny amounts actually have a stimulating effect. Alcohol can have a hormesis-like effect. That's why they do research on folks who drink a very small amount of alcohol. They find that they live longer. We'll talk about that tomorrow as we continue talking about uh, cortisol and peptides and cytokines and stress and uh, all kinds of, uh, all the things we've been talking about. I guess we started talking about the pineal gland way back when. We'll continue uh, tomorrow on the bright side talking about hormesis and the skin. All right, 844-236-6010 is our number from uh, the journal Poultry Science, Evidence for Amelioration of Steroid-Mediated Immunosuppression by Vitamin C. Ah, interesting. Vitamin C actually can balance out the immunosuppression that's caused by cortisol. So under conditions of elevated stress hormone, your immune system shuts down. Under conditions of elevated cortisol, you're more prone to... Things like uh, cold sores, flus. You know, the flu, the, this whole thing with the flu this year, apparently, I haven't really been keeping up with it, but I just, just read an article yesterday. Apparently, this is like one of the worst flus ever. Not one of the worst flus ever, but it's one of the worst flus in a long time. And uh, I would present that one of the main reasons why people get the flu is because of elevated cortisol causing immunosuppression. The more stress you're under, the more susceptible you're going to be to infection. And that includes flu infection, viral infections. The more cortisol you're secreting, the more likely you are going to be to get shingles. In fact, I have people call me almost once a week or twice a week. I'm talking to somebody about shingles, and i got to tell them, you got to reduce your cortisol. you got to balance your cortisol. And now we find that vitamin C does just that. Four experiments were conducted to determine if supplemental ascorbic acid would ameliorate the immunosuppression induced by cortisol, and guess what? Supplemental vitamin C, and by the way, that's ascorbic acid. Tell that to the next numbskull who tells you ascorbic acid is not vitamin C, or it doesn't have vitamin C effects. Supplemental ascorbic acid significantly ameliorated the immunosuppression associated with cortisol and may serve as an anti-immunosuppressive agent. As an anti-immunosuppressive agent, vitamin C for prevention of flus, for prevention of cold sores, for prevention of shingles, for prevention of any kind of uh, immune action or, or immune, uh, any kind of uh, immune attack that is uh, exacerbated by cortisol or immunosuppression. Topically, that works as well, too. Love, love, love topical vitamin C. Speaking of topical, topical application of something called oxyfulvic acid. I'm going to tell you what that is here in a second. Topical application of oxyfulvic acid suppresses the immune response in mice. Oxyfulvic acid is a fancy way of saying plant-derived colloidal minerals. Topical application, fulvic acid, fulvic acid is amazingly important stuff and nobody talks about this. In uh, dirt, You've got three main components, three main nutritional components. You've got something called fulvic acid. You've got something called humic acid. And you've got something called human. Fulvic acid is the essence of dirt, of the activity of dirt. They call, them poly they call the substances in fulvic acid polyelectrolytes. They're electrolytes. They're minerals that have an electrical benefit, and they're found in the soil, in healthy soil, in good soil. They're the result of an interaction, these fulvic acid, these minerals, these, these electrically active minerals, which we've talked about in the past, are the uh, result of, an act, uh, of action that takes place between bacteria, the dirt, the sun, and the plant. Between all of these, these four different elements, the dirt, the bugs, microbes, the, the uh, sun, and the plant, 
minerals get transformed into electrically active substances. And these electrically active substances, like that go by the name fulvic acid, or oxyfulvic acid, some people call them, have tremendous skin health benefits. I'm going to be using them in some of my new truth treatment products. We're going to have fulvic acid sprays. and I, I, I'm just in love with fulvic acid. And it's very similar to what Doc Wallach has been talking about for many years, the plant-derived colloidal minerals. Plant-derived plant colloidal minerals are a little bit more complex than fulvic acid. But the fulvic acids contain the, the electro... They're basically the same thing, actually. I, I don't even really know if there's much of a difference between plant-derived colloidal minerals and fulvic acid. Basically the same thing. You just go... There's these mines in New Mexico and in Utah where you can just scoop out these fulvic acid substances, put them in water, stir them up. And topically, they have wonderful anti-inflammatory benefits. And I would venture to say that plant-derived colloidal minerals probably do the same thing. All right, 844-236-6010 is our number. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Let's go to Nevada. Say good morning to Robert. What's up, Robert? How you doing, buddy? Hey, good morning, man. Thanks for taking my call. Yes, I sir. Oh, no, you thought this went by. I would call the Ben the uh, bright side and a clear border a paradox. <laughs> the, say that say that again. The bright side and what? I, I I would say the bright side and the clear board is an interesting paradox. What's a clear board? <laughs> I don't know what a clear board is. No call. What's no that? Calls. No oh, calls. clear board. Oh, okay, clear board. I got you. No, it's not a clear board. It, it does. You know, it's funny. Folks start calling and like. I guess everybody knows I take calls in the second half. But you've been hold, you've been holding on a while. So, uh, what's going on? Thanks for my call. Appreciate that. Sure. Yeah, Ben, real quick. I was under the impression that in diabetics, when their feet hurt or they start to lose their eyesight, that's due to a buildup of sugar in the blood, thick and sludgy blood. Pretty but much. I ran that by a buddy of mine who's pretty well versed. He says, no, no, Robert, that is an excess of insulin that causes neuropathy. Well, no, like no, that. it's not quite, not quite. The excess insulin, okay. the excess insulin is part of the reason why the blood is sludgy. So I'm giving you the more direct cause, the, the more the more direct cause. He's giving you the prior cause, the initial cause. Yeah, it starts off with too much sugar. Too much sugar causes insulin to spike. Insulin is a growth substance, and it turns on growth chemistry, and that can cause clogs. The sugar can cause damage. Between the clogs from the insulin and the sugar damage, you end up with an inflammatory response at the level of the nerve, and that's where the pain comes from. Hang on. We'll finish up when we come back from our break, because your buddy's not wrong, but I'm just giving you a more direct cause. So hang on, uh, Robert, and if you're on. We all have heard. All right, we're back on the bright side. I'm Farmer Spenny. Four four two three six sixty ten is our number. We've got lines open for you. Eight four four two three six sixty ten. We're talking to Robert in Nevada. Uh, so, Robert, your friend is you're not obviously not. Well, I shouldn't say that. So, uh, insulin definitely is behind everything. Elevated insulin, that is true. But at the level of the blood vessels and the uh, uh, inflammation and the nerves, what you're looking at is dirty blood. Blood that's not that's somehow not oxygenating, oxygenating the nerves. The nerves become much more fragile and uh, sensitized under conditions of lack of oxygen. Uh, the nerves become much more sensitized under a condition of lack of nutrition. And when the blood becomes clogged and dirty, uh, there's a lack of nutrients. The nerves become much more sensitized when there's toxicity that builds up. And as the blood becomes sludgy, the toxicity builds up. So why, the question, why is there a blood problem? Well, insulin and both insulin and sugar are involved, but at the point of the problem, it's dirty blood. Did that clarify that, Robert? Yeah, so it would be the dirty, sludgy, thick blood that can't circulate properly, et cetera, et cetera. That's causing the problem at the point of the problem. But preceding that, yes, insulin is an issue and, and elevated blood sugar. Elevated blood sugar is one of the major causes of dirty blood. When we say elevated blood sugar, we're talking about too much sugar in the blood. At any given moment, your five liters of blood, which is a little over a gallon of blood, is supposed to have a teaspoon of sugar in it. You drink a Coke, and all of a sudden you've got 10 teaspoons. You know, if you eat the standard American diet, you're putting 50 teaspoons of sugar into your blood. And insulin is doing all the work of getting the sugar out of the blood, but eventually that doesn't happen as well. And so the blood sugar builds up. Insulin on its own is a, is a rev you up hormone. It revs things up. The last thing you want to do when... You, you don't have enough nutrients, is rev up a cell. When the cell is revved up, when it's, you got the foot on the gas and there's not enough nutrients, that destabilizes everything. So yes, it's true that insulin and blood sugar are behind it, but at the point of the problem, it is dirty blood. Makes sense. Okay, okay. thanks, bud. 
All right, good. Have a great day. Thanks. All you right, uh, let's go to Chris in Minnesota. Good morning, Chris. Welcome to the Bright Side. Hello. Thank you, Ben. Um, hey. It's great listening to your show. Thank I have a you. question regarding candida in a person okay. and eating mushrooms. Does that affect no, that? Or... No. That, uh, you thinking because mushrooms are a fungus and a yeast is that, or a fungus? Yeah. Is that <laughs> Yeah, now, like, a lot of people have problems with mushrooms, but mushrooms are really interesting. Mushrooms and yeast, for that matter, are highly nutritional. And it, you don't want to, av- it, it, there's no reason to avoid mushrooms and yeast unless you have some kind of uh, re- reaction to them. And I don't know if you'll have a reaction to yeast. Some people have reactions to mushrooms. But mushrooms and yeast are like a cross between an animal and a vegetable. They have, you know, vegetables have their own set of nutrients. Animals have a different set of nutrients. There's some overlap, but there are things in animal foods that you can't get in vegetable foods. And vegetarians run higher risks of deficiencies in these things like vitamin B12, for example, uh, the amino acid taurine, vitamin A, vitamin D. All of these are animal substances. However, mushrooms and fungus and yeast are like a cross between a a bacteria and an animal between a, I should say, between a a vegetable and an animal, between a plant and an animal. So there's a lot of things that you can get in mushrooms that are very vegetarian friendly because they are, uh, the mushroom is almost like a a, a hybrid, excuse me, the fungus is a hybrid between a plant and an animal. So if you're eating a plant-based diet and you're a vegetarian, you run high risks of deficiencies that can be mitigated or that can be, the risks can be reduced by eating lots of mushrooms. So mushrooms are, are amazing, amazing substance. That's why they make, you know, uh, vegetarians know that they can, they make fake steaks out of mushrooms. Are you a vegetarian by any chance, Chris? No, I'm not. Uh- Have you ever seen the steaks they make out of mushrooms? I've, uh, portobello steaks, they call mm-hmm. them. Oh, yeah, yeah. I right? Know. Right, portobello uh-huh. steaks and, and uh, ste- uh, mushrooms have a kind of sort of, they can, they can be, they can, if you spice them just right, they can almost taste beefy, kind of. Yeah. A, a good, somebody who likes steaks is, not, is definitely going to know the difference. But if you're a vegetarian, eating mushrooms can be very helpful. But to answer your question, you're talking about candida, which is a yeast that grows, that overgrows in the body and when you have health challenges. It's kind of a, it's, a, it's just a crazy example of how we focus on the symptom and not the cause. The yeast overgrow in response to bacterial undergrowth. There's a relationship in the body, a, a balancing relationship. The body's got all these balancing relationships. There's a major balancing relationship between bacteria and yeast. We all have yeast. We all have candida. We all have bacteria. We all have H. pylori and E. coli and all these bacteria that we think are bad. We all have them in our bodies, and they're very functional. E. coli is a very important part of the bacteria, the, the colon's bacterial uh, microbiome, the world of bacteria that live in the colon. But when these things overgrow or they're out of balance or they undergrow, yeast can overgrow. So when bacteria undergrow, yeast overgrow. You know, bacteria make things that kill yeast. Yeast make things that kill bacteria. Bacteria make things that keep the yeast in check. Yeast make things that keep the bacteria in check. And in a perfect world or a perfect um, a, a bodily ecosystem, in a perfect bodily environment, everything's living in balance. However, we have done such a number on our gut microbiome with the way we live our lives, on the bacteria that live in our gut with the way I live our lives through antibiotics in the water and antibiotics in our dairy and people intentionally taking antibiotics and chlorine in the water and it's almost fluoride in the water. It's almost endless the different things we do to destroy our gut microbiome and that's, that's presuming that we were born with it correctly. Remember, the microbiome implants in the body as the baby comes down the birth canal. If you're having a baby cesarean section, that isn't going to happen. Then the microbiome, the bacteria in the gut, have to proliferate through breast milk. If you're not feeding your baby breast milk, if you're doing formula, again, that's not going to happen. Or if you're breastfeeding and not for a long, not long enough, or if you're not healthy in your breastfeeding, all of these things conspire to destroy the gut microbiome. Then the kid drinks fluoridated water and chlorinated water. By the time kids are two, three, four years old, there's no the microbiome has been uh, wrecked. There's always going to be some bacteria there, but it's thrown off. Sugar compounds the problem, and by the way, fructose is just as bad as sucrose for people who are, who are big-time fruit eaters. Uh, long story short, when the gut microbiome is not sufficiently populated or doesn't have the right kind of bacteria, the yeast will overgrow. A yeast problem, a candida problem, needs to be regarded as a microbiome problem, as a gut problem. Mm-hmm. The way you deal with yeast is you stop feeding... Uh, you stop feeding the bad bacteria with sugar, and yeast also like sugar, and 
you protect that microbiome. It's the, it is the, the seat of health or disease, one way or the other. You do that by eating fermented foods and by eliminating problem foods and by using your nightly essence and make sure you're using your ultimate enzymes, uh, using fiber and fiber supplements, or not fiber supplements, but ground up fiber uh, in a coffee grinder. That's a great way to help support the microbiome, having regular bowel movements. It's just a digestive health issue is the bottom line here. Does that help? Does that answer your question, ma'am? Yes, it does. Thank you okay. very much, Ben. God bless you. God bless you. Have a beautiful day. Thanks for calling. Thank Chris you. from Minnesota. And let's go to Virginia and say good morning to Dorian. Hey, Dorian. Hi, Ben. Hi. Uh, Hi. This is... Um, I think we should turn I your radio yesterday. down. We got some terrible feedback. Turn that radio oh. down. That's awful. Turn it down. Oh, I think... Is it okay, not you? Give me one second. Go one ahead. Sec. It's screaming in my ear. Gonna... Okay. <laughs> Turn it off. Turn it off. <laughs> Is it off? Um, no, you're turning it the wrong way. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> All right, go ahead, Dorian. Okay. Yesterday I called regarding a couple of friends of mine, one with the total hysterectomy. The second was recently, um, what she said, she had a lump on her breast and she thinks it may be breast cancer. Not, okay. a, not an official diagnosis yet. Okay, so how, tell me how, you want some help with that? Yes. Okay, breast cancer and also endometriosis, these are two different people, but what you want to focus on is the hormone estrogen. And I wish I could tell you all the f interesting ways this is involved, but we're going to run out of time. So I'm just going to give you some action steps. We've only got about a minute here. All right, progesterone cream. Get them on progesterone cream, number one. Uh, if they can't find it or they don't want to deal with going to the doctor to get it or finding it at the compounding pharmacy, use pregnenolone. But I would use progesterone cream. Estrogen is cleared out in the, uh, bowel, through bowel movements and in bile. So making sure the bile system is working really well. Use uh, your ultimate enzymes with bile. They ha there's bile in there. And also get extra bile salts. Bentonite clay can be very helpful for clearing out estrogen. Anything you could do to support estrogen break breakdown at the level of the liver is going to help. Get something called D uh, DIM or I3C. Also calcium uh, deglucurate, selenium. Calcium deglucurate is spelled uh, calcium D-G-L-U-C-A-R-A-T-E. Um, uh, also DIM and I3C, uh, cruciferous vegetables, uh, let's see what else, the B-complex is important for liver health, essential fatty acids, super duper important for helping balance out estrogen, uh, especially uh, uh, omega-3, especially the omega-3 fatty acids. Uh, slow, deep breathing, estrogen is, it will kick it, the stress response kicks in when we don't break estrogen too as well as we should, and that could be partially one of the, uh, one of the reasons why the immune, uh, immune system is suppressed and we get cancer from estrogen. So calming down the body, relaxing the body, super duper important. Slow, deep breathing, SDR breathing. Wish we had more time, because that's a very interesting subject, Dorian. If you want, okay. call back tomorrow. Call back tomorrow if you want uh, earlier in the show. We'll get you. Okay. Answer some more Thank questions. you so much. Thanks, yes. All right. All right. Take care. Take care. All right. I'm Pharmacist Ben. That's all the time we have for today on The Bright Side. Thanks for listening. Please check out our longevity products at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com, and our truth products at truthtreatments.com. Have yourselves a wonderful, beautiful, awesome, spectacular day. We'll talk to you all later, folks. Bye for now.